Hello and welcome to another episode of Retro 79 and today's comic we're going to look at the collection of Pushman and other stories by Yashihiro Tatsumi and um, Yashihiro Tatsumi uh, maybe to the more modern day manga readers um, is not a very common name uh, I reviewed one of his stories already and that's how I came to know him uh, one of his stories uh, called Black Eyes uh, which I, I really really enjoyed and it made me want to seek out some more of his work and also because um, I saw uh, an episode of Cartoonist Kifib uh, where they talked about some of his work as well so uh, I've read this quite a number of times um, not in its entirety. I've kind of gone back to, to some of the stories, uh, in the collection. So there's a there's a good few stories in here. In the collection, and a lot of these stories are you know they're short stories, but as you can see here, here's the the contents. So a lot of the stories are. You know, short stories from, uh, you know, different stories that Yoshihiro had done for, um, you know, the library, like uh, manga bookshops, like where you could borrow, um, you know, manga books. So he did stories especially for that and the thing with these stories is that you know he did these very quickly uh, the art you know reflects that stories are, are you know the art is quickly drawn very gestural in some places and um, you know if, if you're you know, looking at this and expecting some amazing artwork, you know, it's not, this book is not really about the artwork. And, you know, initially I was a little, little bit disappointed, um, found the art to be a little bit underwhelming. But after going back and reading it again and again, you know, I learned to appreciate the artwork and why you know it is as you know, it's simplified and, and not too um, you know in some parts it's, it's a bit rough but you know in others you know he shows great detail in drawing you know everyday machinery there's a story where he draws these lovely cars But it's yeah here. He draws these mechanics. Oh, this is a good shot here. These old cars in the garage. Um, but you know, what I learned is that this is not about the art. You know, you're not buying this for pretty pictures. Uh, this is all about the stories. This is a great shot here in the city. And really, it captured, you know, a time and place in, in Japanese history that, you know, maybe from the West we don't know a lot about. But that we can relate to in some way, you know. Here's the man himself, Yashihiro Tatsumi. And captures a time and place that we don't really know about but that we can relate to as humans a lot of the characters in these stories are you know people who are living on the fringes of society who have trouble uh, integrating and fitting in 
uh, or who may have some, you know, weird issues or problems or, or uh, you know, they're not your regular day-to-day -day people. And this when it came out, I think it was during the 1960s, am I right? That these stories came out. But they're not your 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 typical kind of manga story. Uh, they're more like um, slices of life. And again, as I said before, about people who live on the fringes of society. People who are, you know, struggling to get by day to day, but they might have some other issues as well. And um, just I could come back to these again and again. The storytelling is great. Um, the writer, he's not, you know, he's showing us, he's presenting us these stories. Uh, he's not presenting his opinions on these people. He's just pre presenting their stories and their life. And he's leaving it up to us to decide what we think and how we feel about, you know, the people in these stories. But they're just brilliant. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, these stories, you know. Um, and the art, uh, you know, it's okay, but... For its time, it is what it is, you know. But it's perfect. Like he, he is a great storyteller, visually, visually, and uh, and just a very impressive, very impressive book. One of my, what I, I don't know. Well, all the stories really. I like all the stories. <laughs> some very disturbing stories um there's a very very sad this projectionist has to be a very sad sad story someone who is just find it difficult to You know, he just sees just sex everywhere and uh, finds it hard to exist in, a, in like a proper relationship. You have the man who's uh, an amputee. I think he's a... Uh, you know, he cannot... Um, perform <laughs> uh, but he is paid to watch this guy and some of these stories are you know the pretty sad and uh, with people who are you know, a little bit lost and forgotten about in society. And I think the writer at that time, he could kind of, he could relate. He never really felt like part of the manga mainstream artists. Probably still doesn't, you know, he's kind of, he's out there, especially in his content and that he you know, never was, I don't know about the rest of his work, but I don't think he was one. He was into drawing giant robots and, and aliens and that. Um, these are all, you know, real people, real stories, and stories that he might have picked up from different newspapers and that, or just maybe people you heard about through everyday conversations and that, and that people have, and, and the people that you never really hear about in in uh, you know the news or in TV shows and the dark side of society you know people uh, hiding things from 
their everyday life wearing a mask. You know, there's this brilliant story about the man who is a cross-dresser. That, that was a great story. But it's not presented uh, as you expect and not in the way that, you know, the, the cliches that are often used, you know, by people who maybe don't understand um but or who use you know the, the the old tropes and stereotypes of cross-dressers but this is a very interesting this is a great story the guy who has to clean up after the the sex workers uh, there's a lot of like people who live in the the lower fringes of society doing the, the dirty jobs. Working in the sewers and seeing the things that are kind of hidden away. Like here, the man who finds, um, this is quite shocking. Um, dead baby thrown in the sewers, you know. And after living in South Korea for five and a half years, Korea, you know, maybe a lot of Koreans might disagree with this, but a lot of Korean society and is influenced by Japanese culture because the Japanese had a big part to play much like the Irish and the English you know the Irish are pretty influenced by the English as well very similar cultures that relationship is very similar between Ireland and England and Japan and South Korea and a lot of these stories yeah it reminds me of South Korea Korea comes across as a very clean society, perfect society. Everybody's kind of wearing a mask, but then you have like these these parts of of Korea where they try to hide it, and it's, it's hidden away. It's the fringes. It's on the fringes. You know, like the brothels. And the the call girls and the and the, the the sex workers, the prostitution. You know they never admit to this. You'll talk to any Korean person; they never admit that this exists in Korean society. But it happens. It, it is. It's a big part of Korean society. And yeah, this touches on that kind of that hidden aspect of everyday life that we don't really see. But it doesn't judge, it doesn't point the finger. You know, he's not trying to uh, teach us any lessons here or morals. He's just putting out these things that have happened. And then it's up, up to us, the reader, you know, to decide how we feel about it. But it's so it's something that that's really compelling and interesting to read. So I'd say definitely um, a must buy, and I I will definitely be picking up more of his works because it is it is really really enjoyable read. Yeah, fantastic piece of work. Um, you know you're not buying it for the artwork, but you are buying it for the artwork in relation to storytelling because he he is usually just a brilliant storyteller but also the topics and the themes of the stories uh, yeah it's really great you know and you can see here in the back here 
got big names like the Hernandez brothers who you know really love this work and you can tell the influence in their work because they talk about everyday people uh, regular people and you know people who are on the fringes of society also and I think that's why it's so compelling and interesting to read yeah definitely uh, worth a where to look definitely where to look so that's it for today uh, thank you for listening and uh, I hope you join me soon for uh, some more reviews and um, this one I hadn't done a review for a while been quite busy looking for a new home but uh, and working on my own comic books which I hope to show you soon take care all the best <laughs>